Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights were passed before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> These chairs in the front, any of them? Oh, yes, sir. Can I smoke, Lieutenant? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, thanks. Just put one on. How is the woman? Well, the operator this morning. She's pretty low. And the man who owned the car? We picked him up. Did he do it? That's what we want you to tell us, Mr. Dell. <laughs> well, I got a good look. I know. <laughs> I can tell you all right. I hope so. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> you people on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. Oh, sure, I can tell you all right. If you're I sure hope so, Mr. Dill, I sure hope suspect, so. Have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. <coughs> the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. Okay, okay, move it along, move it along, that's good. Now turn and face front, hands to your sides. Look straight ahead. You, you raise your head. Okay. Number one, Albert Bartok. That's all. Where do you live, Albert? 19137 Fuller. What's your business, Albert? You couldn't make it Al, could you? What's your business, Albert? I'm not working. Why did you hit your wife? Because I'm not working. She keeps reminding me. For two years, she reminds me. Morning, night, and noon, she reminds me. It depressed me. You hit her with a chair. It was the nearest thing. Every time I tried to sit down, she grabbed my hair. She wouldn't give me no peace, so when she grabbed my hair, I grabbed the chair. Number two, Henry Ingram, vagrancy. Oh, the sergeant. This is twice this month, Henry. Uh, yes, sergeant, I just got out. <laughs> Why were you trying to catch the duck? I was walking through the park. I saw the duck. I wasn't trying to catch it. I was trying to pet it. I like ducks. You ruined a whole flower bed trying to pet it. Yes, sergeant. Number three, Martin Cerruti, theft. I told you to keep your head up. Okay, okay. Where do you live, Cerruti? I'm from Denver. We know that. Where do you live here? I don't. I just got off the train. You stole a coat from the Wheelwright Department Store. I forgot to take it off. All right, you've got a place to live now. Number four, John Wolcott, armed robbery, murder. Hey, Lieutenant, where can I put out my cigarette? In the floor. What's your business, John? I run a gas station. Where, John? Corner of 105th and Sutton Place. On the night of November 12th, you held up the Albert Candy Store. No, I didn't, Sergeant. You and another unidentified man shot the owner, Mr. Gus Alver, and his wife, Dora. I had nothing to do with it. That's the charge, John. Yeah, uh, Lieutenant, yeah. Uh, that's him. Yeah, he's the Are one I chased. Are there any questions sure? oh, yeah, that's him. I'm from the audience? Lieutenant? Yeah. I think any he's the questions one. or Number four. identifications yes, from right. the he's audience, the please? Sergeant Graham. Yes, Lieutenant? Number four, hold for interrogation. Sit down, John. All right. I'm liable to be a little rough on you. I didn't do anything. I told you before I didn't do anything. One witness, a Mr. Dill, chased a man, saw him climb into a station wagon, got the license number. It turned out to be your car, John. In the lineup this morning, Mr. Dill identified you as the man he chased. He's wrong. Two other men and a woman also identified you. They all agree they saw you run out of that candy store with another man. The owner of that store died last night. I'm sorry. His wife's in bad shape but she'll live. Look, I've never been in that candy store. I didn't shoot anybody. You live with your brother? Yes. George Walker? Yes. Where was he that night? You keep asking. He went to a movie. And he didn't take the station wagon? I told you, no, he didn't take the station wagon. Does George have a key to the station wagon? How many times do I have to tell you? Does he have a key? No, no, no. He didn't take the car out of the garage that night. Somebody did, John. All right, all right. Somebody took it out. I didn't. George didn't. Go find out who. When Mrs. Albers better, when the doctors say it's all right for us to see him, 
We'll ask her for an identification. Okay. Two men held up a storm, killed her husband. Four witnesses have already identified you as one of the men. Mrs. Alba will know for sure. She won't forget who killed her husband. Okay. I uh, got the brother in your office, Ben. All right. Nothing? Uh, not yet. Take this one back upstairs. Uh-huh. George. Hello, Lieutenant Guthrie. George, your brother's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I know. He sticks with his story. Says he didn't leave the house that night. Says he didn't use the station wagon. Says you didn't either. I didn't. You went to a movie. That's right. The Rivoli, wasn't it? I gave a long statement this morning, Lieutenant. I signed it. Somebody used that station wagon. When the arresting officers got to your house, the motor was still warm. I didn't use it, and I know my brother didn't. You think somebody could have gotten that car out of the garage without your brother hearing it? I don't know. Maybe they could. Hold up a candy store, shoot two people, bring it right back to the garage? I don't know. I just know I didn't use it, and I know my brother didn't either. He didn't hold up a candy store or shoot anybody. My brother wouldn't do anything like that. Uh, what time did you get home? I have to keep telling you. You have to keep telling me. <sighs> Around 12 o'clock, or maybe a little after. There was a cop waiting for me. He'll remember what time better than I do. You went to the movie? Yeah. What time did you get to the movie? Mm -hmm. After 8 sometime. What was playing? Two pictures, Mr. Lucky and a Lady Takes a Chance. They're reissues, aren't they? I saw them before, a long time ago. They're good ones. I wanted to see them again. Your brother runs a gas station, doesn't he? Yeah. How late does he work? Usually, around 7. How does your brother do in his gas station? He does all right. Makes pretty good money. You don't work? No, no, I've been looking for a job. How old are you, George? 22. John's 28? Yeah. When did your mother and father die? Mom died when we were kids. Dad, about five years ago. And John's been supporting you? I told you I was trying to get a job. It's not easy. And I want to talk to you again. You stick around home. Sure, Lieutenant. My brother didn't do it, Lieutenant. Awful lot of evidence, George. But he didn't. We'll talk about it later. Bye, George. Good night, Lieutenant. Howard? Yes, Lieutenant. George Walcott's coming out. Put a man on him. Right. <sighs> What's the matter, Ben? You look unhappy. I'm tired. You want some coffee? You got it made? No, but it'll only take a second. Well, you won't have time. The hospital call. It's all right to see Mrs. Albert. Oh, okay. Hey, here's uh, the report on John Walcott. On good months, he averages about 300 clear, pays $85 a month on the mortgage. A lot of people doing a whole lot worse. Let's get Walcott and take him down to the hospital with us. Mrs. Elba. Mrs. Elba. Hmm. Yes. What is it? This is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Greb. They want to talk to you. All right. We won't take long. All right. We want you to tell us if you've ever seen this man before. Move up, John. Right in here. Mrs. Alba? I don't know. I'm not sure. Could he be one of the men who held up your store? I don't know. He looks... I don't know. He isn't the one who shot us. The one with a gun. He isn't? No. He's not that one. You sure? Yes. Yes, I'm sure. Well, Mrs. Alba, several people say they saw this man run away from your store. I don't remember the other one too well. The one who stood by the door. It happened so quick. The man with a gun... He's the one I remember. He was in the middle of the room. It all happened so quick. The other one I didn't really notice. I think that's about enough for now, Lieutenant. My husband's dead. And we'll do everything we can, Mrs. Alma. What can you do? He's dead. That's all. I hope you didn't have anything to do with it, young man. I hope for your sake you didn't. It's a terrible thing. Well, 
Hey, thanks, man. Yeah? They're here, Lieutenant. Oh, all right. Uh, send in Mr. Dill first. Well, is the coffee all right? <laughs> Whew, hot. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dill, Lieutenant. Uh, come in, Mr. Dill. Oh, how are you, Lieutenant? You met Sergeant Graham? Yes. Uh, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Mr. Dill. Have a seat. Thank you. Mr. Dill, we know definitely the man you identified this morning wasn't the one who actually did the killing. He was one of the men who ran away from that storm. Well, we're interested in the other man now. What did he look like? Uh, well, it all happens fast. Like I told you, I was just walking by when I heard the shot and then the scream. The door to the store flew open. Two men came out. They were running. The first one, the one in front, was the one I pointed out the lineup. You didn't uh, notice the other man? No, not exactly. I got to kind of a look at him, but it all happens fast. I guess I was more interested in the other one, the one I recognized. You don't think you could identify the other one? Well, they separated, like I told you. They started running in different directions. I went after the one who climbed in the station wagon, and I got his license number. You went right after him? Well, I took a look in the store first. I wanted to see what was going on. Then you went after him? Well, I went after the one with the station wagon, yes. I saw the two people lying on the floor, blood. Well, I, I just went after him. How far did you chase him before he got in the station wagon? Oh, about a block, I guess. And how far away from him were you when he drove the station wagon off? Oh, I don't know. Just about uh, oh, 50 feet. Uh, uh, were you across from the station wagon or behind it? Yeah, I was behind it. I was chasing him. Yes, I know, but uh, he didn't cut across the street? The station wagon wasn't parked on the other side of the street? No, he just ran up the block. The station wagon was parked on the same side of the street. Uh, well, did he turn around and look back at anything? Well, I don't remember. I don't, I don't think so. He just ran up to the car and drove off before I could catch him. But you recognize oh, him? Oh, sure, the man this morning in the lineup. You yes. don't remember anything about the other one? Mm, no, 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 I'm sorry. I don't. <sighs> all right, Mr. Dell. Uh, is that all? Yeah, that's all, and thank you. Oh, sure, any time. Uh, Mr. Dill. Uh, yes? If this man was running away from you, you were behind him the whole time. You were about 50 feet away behind the wagon when he drove off. Now, I should think it would be a little hard to tell much about a man under those circumstances. Well, I got a good look. Oh, a darn good look. You said he didn't turn around. Well, now, uh, I don't think you that. I don't remember that well. I got a look at him when he ran out that door. Oh, he went right past me. Oh, I got a look at him then. Yeah. All right, Mr. Dill, that's all. Yeah, well, he was the guy. I got a good look. Yeah. Oh, oh then. You think you'll want me again? We'll call you if we do. What are you doing, Ben? Trying to get a description of the man who used the gun. Yeah. And while you're doing it, you practically made Dill a liar. The way he tells it, or I should say the way you got it out of him, he couldn't have made a positive identification of a man who ran past him through a doorway, then showed him his back for the rest of the time. Yeah, I know, I know. In the lineup this morning, Dill and the others didn't say a word until they heard you read off the charges. But before they went in, they knew whoever we had was the one who owned the station wagon. Okay, okay, explain me the station wagon. Dill got the license number. The car was still warm. Yes, I know, I know. Well, then what are you trying to do? I'm trying to find out who killed the man in the candy store. By making a liar out of the best witness you've got? Who's making a liar? Well, you're trying pretty well, hard. Well, do you mind if we find out what the other three witnesses have got to say? Well, you don't have to get jumpy. I don't. Oh, swell. Yes, Lieutenant. Send in Mrs. Evans. I'm, uh... I'm sorry, Ben. Maybe you'd better put some more sugar in your coffee, huh? Two fellows who certainly know their way around the popular music world will be guest experts on songs for sale tomorrow night on CBS. Join Frank Sinatra and Johnny Mercer with Jan Murray and the others on Songs for Sale this Friday night. And also be listening for that hour of top drama with Up for Parole and Broadway's My Beat. They'll all be here on most of these same CBS stations. Okay, okay, nobody remembers the second man. Everybody remembers the first. Everybody remembers the first. Everybody claims they recognize the guy as he came out the door. Running. Yeah, running. So maybe because they knew Wolcott owned the station wagon, they jumped to identify him. Yeah, we've had wrong identifications before. Yes, but that's the station wagon. That's the car one of the holdup men jumped into. 
Four people, four people, three men and a woman, claimed they recognized the guy. So suppose they really didn't get a good look at him. It was Walcott Station Wagon. Dill got the license number. Two of the other witnesses saw Dill chase the guy, saw the wagon pull away. One of them even identified the make of the wagon. <clears throat> yeah? Sergeant Quine on the phone, Lieutenant. Okay. Quine's tailing George Walcott. Yes, Quine. You ever see the man? Uh, what's the address of the pool? Uh, uh, who's the girl? Paul? Uh-huh. Well, all right. Stay with him. I'm going out for a while. Oh, what do you got? I don't know. I don't want to check it. Quine says George Walcott met a man in a pool room, talked with him for a long time, and then went over to see a girl named Hall. It may be nothing, but I'm going to do some checking. <laughs> Sure, I know Walcott. Plays snooker in here all the time. Hey, you know his brother? No, nope. didn't know he had one. Uh, George met a man in here today. He, he left, went across the street to get a shoe shine. Tall, thin man, dark, wearing a brown jacket, light pants. Rudy. Rudy? Rudy Garvin. He plays in here all the time, too. Buddy of George's. They pal around a lot. Rudy Garvin. You know him? Yeah. I don't like him. Slimy kind of a guy. He's a bad boy. Yeah, I, I, I kind of remember him. Well, you gave him a shine. Tall, thin, dark man, brown jacket-like pants. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, with a younger fellow, brown hair. Yeah, 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 about an hour ago. Uh, pay any attention to what they were saying? Well, no, sir, I just shine the shoes. Yeah? Miss Hall? Yeah. Lieutenant Guthrie, police. Oh. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you. Come in. Apartment's a mess. You know George Walcott? Yeah. You done something? He came to see you a little while ago. Sure, I know him. We're just friends. You done something? You know Rudy Garvin? Yeah. Friend of George's. What did George want? Just say hello. He just stopped by to say hello. How well do you know him? Not too well. We're just friends. You know his brother? No. Never met him. How well do you know Rudy Garvin? Like I know George. Say, what is this? Where were you last night? Last night? Home. I stayed home all night. I was going to clean the apartment, but I got to read in a book. Did you see or talk to George or Rudy any time last night? No. Gee, I sure would like to know what this is all about. Did the boys do something dishonest? You just forget about it, Miss Hall. You just forget about talking to me. Sure. Thanks for your help. Anytime. Sure sorry the apartment's such a mess. the file on Rudy Garb and Ben and his pictures. Uh -huh. Yeah, a dozen arrests, two convictions, petty theft and possession. A cheap hood with a nasty disposition thinks he's tough. Yeah. Here's uh, Quine's last report on George Walcott. Tailed him from the girls to the east side of town where he met the same man he met in the pool hall. Rudy Garvin. Young Walcott's in his house now. Quine staked out across the street. Check on this Miss Hall. Here's the address. Put a man over there to watch him. Right. I'll check back. I'm going down to the hospital and show this picture of Rudy Garvin to Mrs. Alba. She's a lot worse. She's had a bad time. Is she conscious? She was. Mrs. Alba. Yes? Mrs. Alba, the lieutenant's here again. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Mrs. Alba. Oh. Hello, Dennis. I won't take much time. I want you to look at this picture. All right. Lieutenant. Yes? Lieutenant, that's the man. You're sure? That's the man with the gun. The one who shot me. That's the one. He killed 
gosh. Fine brought in George Wolcott about five minutes ago. Uh-huh. What about Rudy Garvin? Well, we're checking. Oh, George. Hello, Lieutenant. What's this all about? I'll stay in the chair, George. What's this all about? Why'd that cop bring me in? Well, we wanted to talk to you some more, George, about your brother. Oh. A couple of things have come up. Made us kind of change our mind about him. You mean you don't think he did it? We're pretty sure he didn't. Well, I told you so. He wouldn't stick up a store or shoot anybody. No, I guess not. He just isn't the kind. He knows who did stick up that store, though. He knows who was using that station wagon. Well, why doesn't he tell you? Oh, he's probably protecting somebody. You think it's me? You think I stuck up that store? Somebody took that station wagon. Yeah, well, I didn't. I told you that. I told you I was on a show. What show, George? I told you. The Rivoli? Yeah. You're a pretty good snooker player, I hear. Snooker? How long have you known Rudy Garvin, George? Oh, about, oh, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess. Why? What do you want to know about Rudy for? What were the two movies you saw, John? Lady Takes a Chance and Mr. Lucky. What time did you get to the theater? About eight, I guess. You sure? Yeah, about eight. You met Garvin today at a pool hall. So what? You talked with him, and then you went over to see a girl named Hall. Yeah, that's right. What's the matter with that? Do you have a key to that station wagon, George? Well, yeah, John and me, we both got keys. What do you want to know about Rudy for? He's got a record. He's a tough boy to get mixed up with. I didn't know he had a record. What time did you leave the house before you went to the movie, George? Uh, around seven. Seven. The Rivoli's not far from your house. What did you do from seven to eight? No, I stopped in the pool hall and shot a game. You run into Rudy Garvin? No, 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 I didn't see him that night. You didn't drive the station wagon? No, I sure didn't. Your brother's a pretty nice guy. He's all right. Look, I didn't do this thing. Why do you think I had something to do with it? What picture was playing when you got to the movie? Uh, Mr. Lucky. They had a newsreel, I suppose. Yeah. Your brother's been supporting you for a long time, hasn't he? Yeah, I told you I was trying to get a job. You went out looking for a job? Yeah. Where'd you go? Who'd you see? Why, well, I saw a lot of people. I don't remember all of them. Name a couple. Well, gee, in the last couple of weeks, I haven't been looking what so What did you hard. see the girl for today? Betty? Last name's Hall. Yeah, Betty Hall. What would you see her for? Well, I just went over to see her. For nothing, just to see her. What part of Mr. Lucky did you get in on? What part? Yeah, what part was happening, you know, what was happening in the story when you walked in? Well, have you seen it? Yeah, we've seen it. Well, you remember the part when they had the big gambling party? Yeah. Well, that was the part when I walked in. Cary Grant had all that money wrapped up in the Where did the newsreel come in? End of the show? Between pictures? Between the pictures. What time did you get out of the show? About 11.30, I guess. I got back to the house around 12, and I met the cop who took me down here. And you didn't drive the station line? No. And you didn't see Rudy Garvin? No. The woman who was shot identified Garvin as the man who shot her. Well, I can't help that. I wasn't with Rudy. I didn't see him You saw both pictures? Yes. You've seen them before, haven't you? Yeah, they're old pictures, but I liked them. I saw them again. I told you that, Lieutenant. You didn't take a message from Rudy Garvin to Betty Hall? No. No, I left Rudy, and I I just decided to stop by and see him. What was the newsreel about? The newsreel? Yeah, what was it about? Well, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I left in the middle. You left in the middle of it? No, no, I didn't mean that. Well, what was it about? I don't remember. You can't expect me to remember everything. You remember the two pictures? Well, yeah, sure. Then you should remember the newsreel. Have something about Korea? Why? Well, Truman? Last week's football games? I don't remember. You can't blame me for that. The candy store was robbed about nine. That would be about the time the newsreel went on. I don't remember the newsreel. I, I, I think I went out to get some popcorn. You were out for the whole newsreel? Maybe I was. What went on after the newsreel? The other picture. Didn't they have any coming attractions or anything? They usually do. Yeah, they had coming attractions. What were they? I don't remember that either. You remember both pictures, but you don't remember the newsreel or the coming attractions? No. Which was first, the newsreel or the coming attractions? The newsreel. How do you know that? Because I I, I saw it start, and and then I went to get the popcorn. How did it start? I don't remember. Then the coming attractions went on? Yes. I thought you said the other picture went on after the newsreel. I think you better tell us where you really were, George. Okay. Get a stenographer, man. Right. Cigarette, George? Yeah. Where can we find Rudy Garvin? Over at Betty's apartment. 
That's why I went by to tell her that Rudy'd be by around nine tonight. They're leaving town. Will you let my brother go now? There's two cars at the end of the street. Quine and Asher are around back, two men at each side of the building. Quine and Asher moved everybody out except the girl. She's still in there, hasn't left her room. Uh, what time is it? Nine o'clock. Well, Rudy's late. We take him on the street? No, he's got a gun. Better wait. Quine said the landlady was a little unhappy, afraid she was going to get her place shot up. Well, I hope she doesn't. There's a... There's a cab. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's Garvin. Let him get into the building. All right, let's go. Second floor. Third door. George. What do you want? What do you want? <coughs> Look out, man! <laughs> Garvin's pretty bad. You uh, better get an ambulance. Boy, we sure wrecked this place. Uh, don't worry about it. Betty never cleans it anyway. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off their number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of a suspect, The lineup stars William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb and was written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard McNear, Raymond Burr, Sam Edwards, Clayton Post, Hi Averback, Jeanette Nolan, and Gene Tatum. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Every weekday evening, Monday through Friday, two of radio's top reporters, Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas, are heard on most of these same CBS stations backed by the resources of CBS' famous worldwide news-gathering organization. Ed Murrow and Lowell Thomas bring you the facts of the day's events, plus the color and background they've gathered in years of world travel and reporting. Get the news first and best from Ed Murrow and Lowell Thomas each weekday evening on CBS. This is CBS, the star's address, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>